Welcome back ladies and gents to the Rock the JVM channel. I'm Daniel and this video will be slightly different from the tips and tricks streak that I normally do on Rock the JVM. This video is about the Cat's Effect course that I've just launched on Rock the JVM and many of you have been waiting for. And I made this course for those of you who are interested in learning Cat's Effect and I'm going to describe what this course contains, what you can expect from it and how it can benefit you. So first of all, who is this course for? In short, this is for experienced Scala developers. So the assumptions are that you have some solid computer science fundamentals, including some multi-threading essentials, and also be familiar with Scala as a programming language. Now, as a bonus, if you also know cats, and in particular, the cats type class hierarchy, that is a bonus that will help us later in the course when we discuss polymorphic effects. Now the goal of this course is to get you really productive with Cat's Effect and deconstruct pretty much everything that Cat's Effect has to offer. And in this course we write 3000 lines of code from scratch. And if you're curious to see what kind of code we write in this course, you can go to github.com slash rockthejvm, which is where I store the repositories for all the courses that I have on the site. And you can click on this Cat's Effect thing that I've just published. So github.com slash rockthejvm slash Cat's Effect. And this is the repository for all the code that we are going to write in this course. You can browse through it and see for yourself what kind of code we write in the course. Now I want to take a couple of minutes to discuss the structure and lessons of this course just to give you an idea of what you can expect in this course. So the first chapter contains a recap of the Scala fundamentals that we are going to need in this course and contextual abstractions for both Scala 2 and Scala 3. This Cat's Effect course is completely compatible, 100% compatible with Scala 2 and Scala 3 without any problems whatsoever. So the first chapter reestablishes the Scala fundamentals that we are going to need in this course and also optionally the Cat's type classes hierarchy that we are going to use at the last chapter of the course. After the first chapter, which is mainly a recap, we're going to discuss pure functional programming and discover what an effect is. And after that, we're going to discover the IO monad in Cat's Effect, and we are going to explore it in really great detail with error handling, designing IO applications, parallelism, traversal, and so on. So we're going to explore most of the concepts, most of the features directly applicable to the IO monad in Cat's Effect so that you're already productive with one of the core principles of Cat's Effect. After that, we are going to discuss Cat's Effect concurrency, which is one of the main powers of Cat's Effect to design concurrent and high performance applications. And we are going to start with fibers because they are foundational to all of concurrency in Cat's Effect. They are quite low level, but they will serve us well in understanding the rest of the patterns in this chapter. And we are going to explore the bracket pattern and resource in particular, which is extremely used in practice. So resource is one of the main features why why Cat's Effect is actually being adopted in Scala Teams. So this will be quite important. And after that, we're going to discuss IO concurrency with racing, cancellation, blocking, and async. All of those are really powerful features in Cat's Effect. All right, now after this chapter, we're going to explore concurrent coordination in Cat's Effect. That is purely functional coordination concurrency primitives, starting with ref, the atomic reference, purely functional version, and deferred. And these two are foundational to all of the concurrency primitives in Cat's Effect, including semaphores, countdown latches, cyclic barriers, and including the mutex which we are going to implement from scratch. Now, if you've never thought about concurrency primitives, in purely functional terms, this chapter will be for you. These primitives were mind-blowing to me when I first started with Cat's Effect, so these will be quite interesting. And finally, we are going to discuss polymorphic effects, that is, generalizations of all the behaviors that we've discovered so far in this course, with type classes in the style of the Cat's library. So Cat's Effect has its own type class hierarchy, starting from monad cancel, spawn, concurrent, and temporal. And finally, we're going to end with sync and async, which are the two most powerful type classes in Cat's Effect to be able to suspend any computation in the context of Cat's Effect. And we're going to discuss in detail what that expression means, as vague as it may sound. Now, if this course is interesting to you, I left a link in the description to this video. You can click that or you can go to rockthejvm.com and scroll until you can see the Cat's Effect course 
here in the main page. So if you click on the picture or this link or the link in the description of this video, you will get to this course description page that describes what Cat's Effect is, what you can expect from this course, how the course works, all the skills that you are going to acquire at the end. You're also going to get a screenshot of yours truly and also a list with all the lessons included in this course, some with free preview in case you're interested in learning about my teaching style if you haven't seen me anywhere else from from another course. All right, now let me show you a quick overview of what's included in this course. So we have at this moment 41 lessons that are carefully deconstructing the Cat's Effect library in all of its bits and pieces. In total, we have 15 hours of video and we write 3000 lines of code from scratch and I write this with you on camera. Also, if you sign up for this course, you'll also have some automatic exclusive access to the Rock the JVM private community with people just like yourself. And in this community, we share lots of material about Scala and functional programming and lots of other tools based on the JVM, including big data and conferences and job offers and discussions and so on and so on. So if you sign up for this course, all the updates are free. So if you buy this course once, I'll always keep it up to date with no extra charge and you have lifetime access with no expiration date. Now, if this course is too expensive for you, you have some cheaper options in the form of the monthly membership, which gives you access to everything on the site for a lot less per month and other bundles that I might create in the future. So I hope this video is useful and I'm waiting for you in the course.